Good morning and welcome to the youth led service. I'm Rosie and I'm a member of the youth here at St Saviour's. I'm going to pass you over to Amelia for our first song in a moment but first let's have a time of prayer. Lord thank you for all the people who are joining us this morning. We pray for our church family that are not able to be with us today or are unwell. As we listen to Sonia, help us be blessed by what you are saying through her. Amen. Over to Amelia. Thank you for leading us in worship this morning, Amelia. It's now time for just a small amount of church news. As we've been saying for a while now, the church news email is the best place for all the information with everything that's going on in the life of St Saviour's. But just two events that are happening this week that we wanted to highlight are on Tuesday the 2nd of February at 8pm. The Women's Ministry are having another get together over Zoom. If you would like more information about this, please do contact women at stsaviorsunbury.org.uk and they will be able to give you all the information you need. And then on Wednesday, the 3rd of February at 7.30pm, we have week two of Alpha and it's not too late to join us. So if you'd like more information about this, please do contact lorraine.hutton at stsaviorsunbury.org.uk. This morning, Sonia will be speaking to us in the first sermon on our series of In Christ. And this morning, she'll be speaking on confidence in Christ. But before we go any further, we've got our family worship that is being created for us this morning by Joe. Um, and kids, while this is happening, 
you need to be paying close attention as we've got four questions that we'd like you to answer and there will be a prize for those who get this right. So question number one is what colour is Paul's top in the video? Question number two is on a white brick there is black bricks that are representing writing. How many black bricks were there? So that's question two. Question three, we would like you to give us two of the colours of the letters that appear in the word thanks at some point in this video. So we need two of those colours. And then question four, our final question, is roughly how many red bricks were used in the heart at the end? And if you can email your answers to this to kids at stsavierssunbury.org.uk, we will be able to sort the prizes for those who have taken part. So I'm going to hand over now as we watch our family worship. was incredible thank you so much joe for spending so much time putting that together and kids just a quick reminder of those questions what color was paul's top how many black bricks represented writing on the white brick what were two of the colors that were used to create the letters for the word thanks and roughly how many bricks were in the red heart so we're now going to spend just a few minutes in prayer. Father, we thank you that you are in control. That whatever we have been through this week, whatever our weeks have looked like, that you have been in them with us. Father, we pray for the women's ministry as they prepare and run out on Tuesday. Father, we pray that it is a real blessing to those who attend. Father, we pray for the second week of Alpha. Father, we thank you for the first week and how that went. And Father, we pray that, yeah, you would be bringing the people you want to that session. Father, we pray that you would speak to them, that they would learn something more about you through that week of Alpha. Father, we wanna pray for the church as a whole at this time where things are still uncertain. Father, we pray that you would continue to use the church, not just St Saviour's, but the whole church, that you would just be using us and you would be working in our lives at this time. Father, we want to continue to pray for the leaders of our nation. Father, would you give them wisdom and guidance Father, it is not an easy job that they are doing. And Father, we just pray that you would pour your blessings out upon them. Would you give them peace as they have to make difficult decisions? And Father, we just want to thank you for your provision. And Father, we just, yeah, we just thank you for what you are still doing in and through St Saviour's at this time, through the food bank, through the youth, through the kids' provision. Father, we thank you that we are still able to meet with you in so many different ways. Yeah, we ask for you pour your blessing out 
on each and every person this morning. Amen. So I'm going to hand back over to Amelia now, who is going to lead us in worship. And following on from that, we will have our Bible reading from Rafe. And then Sonia will be bringing the word to us.
Philippians 1, verses 1 to 11. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all God's holy people in Christ Jesus at Philippi, together with the overseers and deacons, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Thanksgiving and prayer. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel of the first day until now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work, good work in you will Carry it on until completion and completion until the day of Christ Jesus. It is right for me to feel this way about all of you, since I have you in my heart. And whether I am in chains or defending or and confirming the gospel, all of you share in. God's grace with me. God can testify how long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your your love may abound more and more in the knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is the best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Christ Jesus, Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. So today we're starting a new series. Um, entitled In Christ and today we're talking about In Christ Confident. So before we start let's pray. Father God I just pray that you would be with each one of us wherever we are and I just pray that you would give us open ears and open hearts to hear what you have to say to each one of us wherever we are and send your Holy Spirit on us now we pray in Jesus name. Amen. So, in this passage, we see Paul in prison. He's received a gift from the Philippians, the Christians in Philippi, to help Paul in prison. They've sent this gift with Aphroditus, and Paul is thanking them for it, and also uses the letter to encourage them. Paul starts his letter in a similar way to other letters he has written. For example, in Romans 1.8, Paul says, First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you because your faith is being reported all over the world. And in 1 Corinthians 1.4, it says, I always thank my God for you because of his grace given in you in Christ Jesus. 1 Thessalonians 1.2 says, We always thank God for all of you and continually mention you in our prayers. So here in Philippians, Paul writes in verses three to five, I thank God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. 
Paul seems to write with such encouragement and support um, of where he is writing. And this is happening here in this letter and shows Paul's love for the Philippian church. Paul wants the people receiving this letter to receive grace and peace. Let's imagine if we were in prison, how might we feel? I think if it was me, I would feel terrible, a bit sorry for myself, missing those I loved. However, Paul is in prison and wants to show his appreciation to those in Philippi who had sent him this gift. He's grateful and hopeful. In verse 3, Paul says that he thanks God every time he remembers them. He's starting with showing them that he is not just praying for them once, but on many occasions, many times. This would have given them great comfort and encouragement. How are we at praying for others? Do we spend time praying for those in need and those we know, not just once, but frequently? Paul says he always prays with joy. Wow, he's not only praying regularly, but also with joy. This opening section of this letter must have encouraged the Philippians a great deal, knowing that Paul, in prison, was encouraging and supporting them. When Paul prays with joy, this shows the state of mind he was in. He prays with joy, not self-pity or resentment, even though his circumstances weren't great. In verse 6, Paul writes, Being confident of this, that he who has begun a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. In these verses, Paul is stating that he is confident. He knows that because the Christians in Philippi believe in Jesus, that they will continue working for God. And in turn, God will help and support them and give them courage and confidence and that they will carry out the task of taking the message of Jesus to others and be like Jesus, whatever their circumstances. And they will do this until they go to heaven or Jesus returns. This got me thinking about what confidence is. What are we confident about and what are we confident in? If we're confident about something, what does it look like? In the Oxford English Dictionary, it states that confidence means the feeling or belief that we can have faith in or rely on someone or something. We can be confident, can't we, that a chair can hold us if we sit on it. And we can be confident if we get on a train, it will get us to where we need to go, as long as it's labelled as such. I love watching superhero movies. There's always a superhero character that has the special powers and the baddie that takes, wants to take over the world. When we're watching these movies, even though there may be some twists and turns in the storyline, a chase or two and a battle between good and evil, we always know that the good guys are going to win the battle in the end. There'll be difficulties along the way, but they always win. And we all cheer and the superhero flies off into the distance. Even before we start watching these movies, we can be confident that the hero will win the day and rescue who he or she needs to rescue and the world will be restored to some kind of normality. Are we as confident in Jesus? Are we confident that knowing Jesus will save the day? Save our day? Are we confident that asking Jesus into our lives means that we have a future and a hope? In Romans 5 verses 1 to 2 it says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Paul is certainly confident in Christ and what it means to be his follower and how to live his life to be like Jesus and show that love to the world and share it with others. Paul continued speaking out what it means to be a Christian wherever he was. Even when his circumstances were difficult, Paul spoke about his faith and what it meant to him. Do we know what it means to be a follower of Jesus? There's an organisation called The Four Points that uses symbols to show the message of the Bible. Here, here they are now. A heart shows that God loves me. A cross here, I have sinned. A different kind of cross, Jesus died. And a question mark, I need to decide 
to live for God. This is a great simple way to remember what the Bible teaches us. For me, being confident in Christ means knowing that God sent Jesus to die for me. And because of this, if we believe in Christ Jesus, we can be forgiven if we mess up. We can have a relationship with God. We can speak to God at any time. We can have a relationship with Jesus who understands and knows what it means to be human. He lived on earth and had troubles and trials himself. He knows what we're going through. We can struggle. It's especially hard at the moment, isn't it? Being isolated from others, having to have school from home, speaking to people through masks, doing things so differently to normal. But no, that in all things, whatever we're going through, we can be confident that Jesus is with us. He never changes. He walks with us and beside us and the Holy Spirit can equip and empower us in all that we do. Paul had his share of trials and difficult situations and he made it work for him and praised God and encouraged others even when it was hard. He used his time of struggle to his advantage by speaking to others about his faith that he may not have been able to if he wasn't in those particular situations in the first place. In a book by Eddie Askew called A Silence and a Shouting, he says this about Paul and the verses in Philippians 1, 3 to 11. He says, look at the physical context of Paul's joy. He's writing from prison, not a place geared to generate joy. Yet rejoice I will, affirms Paul, whatever happens. His joy is not at the mercy of superficialities, changing like the wind, but arises from his confidence in the support of the Spirit and in his experience of the strengthening which their prayers for him gave. The Christian's faith is unfair to the non-believer. It depends on experience, not on theory. If you've not got the experience, you can't have the joy. If you've once experienced the joy Paul writes of, nothing can take it away. Yes, it's difficult, honorary world, and people can be difficult too, but God is at work in the world. Prayer is abroad, and Paul is content to know he is within God's purposes. Come what may, he will rejoice, because he is not alone. Yes, we are not alone. We should be confident of what Jesus has done for us, so that we can show his love and care for others, We can know that we have a God who loves and cares for us too and that the Holy Spirit will equip and help and guide us through any circumstance. A song by Social Club Misfits called Enough talks about how God is enough for us whatever we're going through. These are some of the lyrics from the song. I was born to walk through the fire. I was made to run through these flames. Even when I'm broken and tired, you are enough. All I see is fear, that's not welcome here. Fight hard, persevere, slowed down, switch your gears. Focus, make this the year. Yeah, you're hopeless, give him your tears. Father, stretch your hand down from heaven. Please save me, I'm holding to the promises you gave me, you made me. Whatever we're going through, we can be confident that God is enough for us and he will help us and fight for us and be with us. We can be confident that the work that Jesus Christ has started in us can go on till the end. Being a Christian doesn't mean we won't have any trials or never suffer, but it does mean that when we go through trials, God is with us. Jesus walks beside us and we can have peace and help in these difficult situations from the Holy Spirit. Let's spend a moment now thinking about our situation and our circumstances. What are we confident in? Are we confident that Jesus is with us? Do you know that the love of Jesus doesn't change? No matter what we're going through, he can help us and give us peace. We just need to believe. Give your worries and your cares to him now. He's here for you.
I'm just going to close with the prayer from Paul in Philippians 1, 9 to 11. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, fulfilled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Amen. Thank you so much, Sonia, for bringing that word to us this morning, that whatever our circumstances look like, whatever it is that we are walking through, that God is with us and we can be confident in Christ through it. And as we go towards the end of our service now, we're just going to uh, listen to a song um, by Soul Survivor called The Promise and just listen to these lyrics. It's got an awesome video for you to be watching, kids. But just listen to the lyrics and really take on board what it is saying. And at the end of this song, we'll go into another song of worship from Amelia. And then our youth team have put together some prayers. And then we'll have our final blessing and close with Rosie.
Father, we just thank you for the way the youth have led the service this morning. And we just pray that you would continue to grow our youth in this church to become the leaders that they are and develop their full potential and that we do respect them as being the church of the here and now and not the church of the future. Amen. Father, we thank you for the youth of our family here at St Saviour's and for the privilege you have given us in leading them on their journey with you. We thank you for your gifts to them of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Please help us to encourage them to grow these gifts and share them with others in their communities at home and at school. Please also give them the confidence to share your love story and help us to encourage and support them in their endeavours. God bless them all and keep them safe. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for all the members of the Younger Youth Group at St Saviour's. I pray that you will keep them safe during this difficult time that we are living in. Help each one of them to look to you and may they grow stronger in their faith during this lockdown. Give them courage when they need it and help them in their homeschooling that they may go on to do great things for you in the future. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And Father God, we want to thank you for the older youth here at St Saviour's. Father, we want to pray that you would deepen and strengthen their faith. Father, we want to pray for them with all the uncertainty around education and exams and schooling at the moment. With the stress that that can cause, Father, would you bring them peace and comfort? And Father, we pray that you would guide them in their next steps. In Jesus' name. Amen. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for Friday Night You. I thank you that it's a safe place that we can come together, Lord, and be with you and have laughter and fun with all the games that we get to do as well. I pray for each and every young person and each and every leader, Lord, that in their weeks ahead and the weeks before, Lord, that you will be with them, Lord, and that this will be a great time for us to have a rest from the busyness of life currently. In Jesus' name, Amen. Lord, we pray now for all our young people and their schooling, whether they're learning at home or whether they're actually going into school or college. Lord, we pray that you would protect them spiritually, physically, mentally and emotionally. We pray too that you would provide all that they need. May the technology work, Lord, and may you help them to understand what's required. We pray too that you'd help them with their work, getting it done. And Lord, we ask that you would bring them peace, that you would reduce anxiety at this time. In Jesus' name, Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you for the St Saviour's youth team. Thank you for their gifts and their passion and care for young people. Help each one of us use our gifts for your glory. Give us wisdom, discernment and guide us, Lord, when we teach and discuss different issues with the young people. Help us to encourage them in their faith, pray with them and for them, and support them in whatever they are going through. Give us fresh vision in how to reach and engage young people and to share our faith with confidence. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you all for leading us in prayer. We've come to the end of our service now, but here's a blessing before you go. God of power, may your boldness of your spirit transform us. May the gentleness of your spirit lead us. May the gifts of your spirit equip us to serve and worship you. Now and always. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. We hope to see you next Sunday and we hope that you have an amazing week.